Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the three to five player game, Ride the Rails, designed by Harry Wu and published by Capstone Games, who helped sponsor this video. In the golden age of railway travel, distant cities are connected and passengers can travel from one side of the country to another. And that means there's money to be made for savvy railway investors like you. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, put the board in the center of the playing area. The board is divided up into a variety of hexes, and on some of them you'll see this city icon. In each hex with one of those, place one of these passenger tokens. Your map will look like this when you're done. Then put the locomotives sorted by color beside the board. I've set them in some trays that I have. These don't come with the game, but you can pick up some of your own by checking the links in the description of this video. Next, find these seven pieces and put them into the matching spaces for them found in the bottom right hand corner of the board. Each player now chooses a color and takes the matching player board and three player discs. We'll be setting up a three player game using blue, white, and green, and we'll put the other two colors back in the box. You'll find two spaces labeled as zero on this side of the board and each player now puts one of their markers onto each space. The remaining discs are then randomly put into the first available spaces of this turn order track. And then finally you put this round marker on the round one space right here. And that's the setup. In Ride the Rails, you and the other players will be investing in railways and connecting cities with the goal of moving passengers around the company, which will earn money for you and the other players. Have the most money by the end of the game and you'll win. The game is played over a series of rounds and each round is made up of three phases, starting with the take a share phase, where each player will take one turn. First, check this turn order track, which goes from left to right, but during this phase, turns are taken in reverse turn order. So this player will go first, then this one, and finally blue. On your turn, you'll take one of the available locomotives for that round, and you can tell which colors are available by looking at the train icons next to the current round tracker. In the first round, for example, only red and blue trains will be available. In the second round, red, blue, and orange will be available. And as each round goes, your options increase. Now let's say the first player chose to take one of these red locomotives. You then place the train that you took on the leftmost open space of the matching color on your player mat. And locomotives on your mat represent the shares you own in that color's railway. So here I have a share in red. After the third round, it might look something like this, which means that I have two shares in red and one share in yellow. After every player has taken a share of railway of their choice, it's time to move to the second phase of the round, building track, where again, each player will take one turn. This time though, turns will be taken in order going from left to right, so blue will go first. And on your turn, you may add a certain number of locomotives to the board from those in the supply, based on the number of players in your game, as shown here. In a three player game, you can add up to eight locomotives on your turn, while in a four player game, the limit is five locomotives, and in a five player game, the limit is four. And you can split up your allotted trains between any of the railways you own shares in. I'm in a three player game right now, so I can take up to eight trains of the colors that I have stock in. Right now, I only have shares in red, so I can only take red trains. On a later round, if I had shares in blue as well, then I could take any combination of blue and red trains up to eight. If later it looked like this, I could take any combination of eight red, blue, and yellow trains. Right now, it's the first round of the game though, and I only have a share in red, so I could take up to eight locomotives from the supply and place them on the board, following a few restrictions. The first locomotive of any given color must be placed in a city that shows that matching color. So this player could only start a red railway in one of these six cities of the board. Also, as you're reminded of here, only one train can be put in each of these spaces. So once I have a train here, nothing else can go in this space. A person wanting to add a blue train later, for example, would have to go in one of these other spaces. Once a line has begun, each other locomotive of that color must be placed adjacent to at least one of that railway's existing trains. So my next red train could go here, 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 or here. Maybe I'll put it in this space. And then I'll continue adding trains. Now keep in mind, you don't have to add to the ends of the trains. I could also branch off somewhere in the middle if I wanted to, but maybe in this case I'll just keep going. Also keep in mind anyone else who wants to build red trains later in the game 
they will also have to build off the red trains that are already on the board. But it's still my turn to keep placing trains, so I'll continue. Though I should mention, unlike these starting spaces that can only contain a single train, every other space on the board can contain up to two trains, but each train that shares a space must be a different color. Let's say it was a later turn and someone was adding blue trains to the board. They could create a path that crosses over here because again, two trains of different colors can share the same space. But now this space is full and no other trains can be placed here. And again, you could never have two trains of the same color in the same space. The exception to all these restrictions is Chicago because its symbol here means that you can actually have up to one of each colored train in its space. Though it's not likely that that would happen. One other restriction is that you can never have more than two trains of the same color in spaces that look like this. That means I could extend the path like this into this space, but that's the limit. I couldn't now place a red train into this space. Next, let's talk about these darker spaces and they represent mountains. If you place any number of your trains into mountain spaces during this phase, then the amount of locomotives that you can place on your turn is decreased by one. So normally, as we saw during a three-player game, I would get to place eight during my turn. But now, because some of my trains were put into mountain spaces, I can only place, at most, seven. This also means that if you had already added seven locomotives to the board, you couldn't place your eighth onto a mountain space, because that would also exceed your limit. And don't worry, a reminder of these placement restrictions for mountains and cities can all be found right here on the board, which also shows the three phases of the game. Now though, as explained, because we're in round one, the only possible trains that can be placed are red or blue ones. Since you can only place a color of train that you have shares in, and those were the only colors available to take in this first round. And we saw that they entered the board on one of these six spaces here on the far right side of the map. But as rounds go on, you'll have access to other colored trains you can place during this phase. So let's see where they can enter the board. Orange appears as a color in all six of the original starting spaces that we looked at, as well as here in Chicago. So its first train can be put in any one of those spots. Yellow is unique, and to explain it, I've laid out several trains, as you might find by the time you're able to place yellow in the third round. A yellow train can either start in Chicago, as its color is shown on that space here, or in any three of the westernmost cities that already have a train of another color in them. So this is something that will be different each time you play, but in this case, the three possible cities would be here, here, and here. So for example, I might start placing some and then head off in this direction. When purple becomes available in round four, it can start in any one of these four spaces showing purple on the far west side of the board. In the fifth round, when black becomes available, it can start in any of the cities of the map because they all show the black color. Of course, at most, only two trains can be in a single city unless otherwise stated, as we've already gone over. So that means I couldn't put a black train here, but I could start one here, or perhaps instead over here. All right, so now we know all the different places that trains can enter the board from based on their color. And once a particular color is on the board, new trains of that color that would get added must go adjacent to them. So with that understood, let's talk about some of the different bonuses you can earn by adding trains to the board. As shown in this space, anytime you place a new train in Chicago, including if you just started a new colored line there, you immediately gain $2. Anytime you earn money, you show it by moving your disc here, the appropriate number of spaces, along this money track that extends around the outside edge of the board. And if you ever earn more than $99, then jump your marker from here back over to the zero space and also move your other marker one space up along this track to show the $100 that you just earned. In other words, in a case like this, we would have $106. The first player to continue a track into one of these cities with a $5 banner will gain $5. And unlike Chicago, each one of these spaces can only be scored once. So while both of these trains earn $2 each, any new train put in this space won't earn anything. Also, this $5 can only be earned by continuing a track into it, not by starting a track in one of these cities. Another type of bonus can be earned by the first player who puts a train that completes a line connecting any one of these six multicolored East Coast cities to any one of the black and purple West Coast cities. And this is called earning the transcontinental bonus. 
Now a track like this will be long enough that it will always require more than one color of train. And if at least one of those connections between track colors occurs in a city space, like we see here, then the player is awarded $12. But if the connection only occurs in a regular space, like we see here, they'll only earn $8. You're reminded of this bonus here at the top of the board, and again, the values that you earn based on where those connections happen, either in a city or in a regular space. But this bonus, no matter how much it ends up being worth, is only paid out once. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap. In the first phase, each player, in reverse turn order, takes one train and puts it on their mat as a share in that company. Then in the second phase, in normal turn order, each player puts a certain number of trains on the board based on the number of players, and they can be of any combination of colors that a player owns stock in. Then after everyone is gone, it's time for the third phase, riding the rails, which is also done in the normal turn order. On your turn, you pick any one passenger on the board and then move it along a continuous connected path of locomotives to another city. It doesn't matter where the passenger ends up, or if you own shares in any of the railways that the passenger traveled on. The important thing is that there is a full connection of at least one color of train between each city traveled. These connections are known as links. For example, I could have this passenger travel from this space over to this city, then this city, and then finally to here. That's a total of one, two, three links. Now I wasn't able to keep going from here to this city because there is no single color of train that connects this city to this one. The red train stops here and the blue train gets most of the way there but not all the way to the city. If there had also been a blue train in this space then this passenger could have traveled over to here as well. Also keep in mind that the route a passenger travels can never pass through the same hex twice. I couldn't for example have traveled in a direction like this looping around and coming up to here because I would have passed through this space more than once. Either way, once you have a valid trip to make, you then score it. To help with the scoring, you can use this area of the board here, and I've set up a reasonably complicated example like you might find later in the game to help make it clear how scoring works. Now first, you're going to count the number of lengths your passenger travels through for each color of locomotive. For example, if we had this passenger go from here all the way over to here. Then we would first travel through one, two, three red links. And you record that by moving the red marker here one, two, three spaces upward. Anytime you move one of these smaller colored markers, you also move the larger white marker up the same number of spaces. So again, one, two, three. This passenger isn't finished traveling though. It will also pass through one, two blue links. So we move the blue marker two spaces up, and that means the white marker also moves two spaces up. Now remember, you never have to travel the full distance you could when moving a passenger. We could have stopped at any one of these other cities. But let's say the player does decide to have this passenger keep going over to here, which is one yellow link, moving this marker one space, and this one as well. Now once the passenger has arrived at their final destination, you then remove them from the board. It doesn't matter which player caused the passenger to move, Every player that owns stocks in the colors of trains that made up the links traveled can now earn money. And you'll get $1 per link per stock that you have in those colors. In this case, the blue player has three red stock, and we saw that three red links were traveled. So that's three times $3 for a total of nine. Plus they also own two stocks in blue, and there were two blue links, so that's another $4. And although the passenger traveled across a yellow link, this player has no yellow stock, so they earn nothing for that, bringing their total to $13. This player has a different combination of stocks, but would also earn money by multiplying the number of stocks they have by the number of links traveled. Once every player has collected what they are owed for the traveling passenger, the player who was resolving their turn, the one who moved the passenger, they will then earn an amount of money equal to this marker's position on the track. So if it had been blue who was taking their turn, they would now earn seven more dollars. You don't have to use that bottom area of the board to calculate the scoring of passengers if you don't want to. In many cases, it might be just as easy to count the points out loud with the other players. But if you do use those tokens, just return them to their original positions at the bottom of the track when you're done scoring a passenger. Then the next player in turn order chooses a passenger to move to a new destination, and so on. Moving a passenger isn't optional, but you do get to choose which one you deliver and how far it travels. You may not want it to travel as far as it could go if you think that will help another player earn more money. 
Then, once every player has moved a single passenger, the round ends, and it's time to adjust the turn order. Reorder the player discs on the turn order track so that the player with the least amount of money is first, down to the player with the most. Now, if there's a tie between players for how much money they have, then you also reverse the order of those players who were tied. Now you advance the round marker one space, and remember, this may introduce a new railway that players can invest in, as you're reminded of here. Once the sixth round is complete, the game is over. You then check to see who earned the most money, and the player with the most wins. In the case of a tie for most money, the tied players share the victory. And that's how you play Ride the Rails. Now there's also a France-Germany expansion map being offered that you can pick up separately at the time of this recording if you'd like to further mix things up while playing. But if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.